Hi there, I'm Andrea Koppel, and it's time for Coffee, the podcast where you get to hear firsthand what the jobs and careers that interest you the most are really like. Hey there, Java junkies. Welcome to another K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. By the way, K-Cups come in three sizes, single, double, and triple shots, or roughly one minute, five minutes, or 10 minutes in length. So if you don't have time to throw back an entire caffeinated career conversation, these K-Cup mini episodes of T4C can give you a quick caffeinated fix, whether you're on the go or you only have a few minutes to binge. So grab your mug and take a chug, because it's time for a caffeinated career double shot K-Cup with my guest, Andrew Dana. How did you get people in the door Yeah, when you did finally open for business? Yeah, I mean, I think the, the two businesses feed off of each other. I think being at all these different farmers markets is really the best form of marketing. You're in all these different parts of the city that people don't even know about where a restaurant is. They're trying the pizza. And they're, oh, do you have a restaurant? So that was like the best form. I mean, we're on social media and all that stuff, but it's not like we like hired a PR firm or did anything super strategic. We just tried to make really good pizza and have a great vibe and give people great customer service. And we figured if we did that relentlessly day after day, eventually, you know, the word would get out. And it's a small enough city where if you're doing something really quality every day, people start to learn about it. And that's sort of what happened. Like the restaurant opened and it was sort of busy. And then it just sort of slowly grew and grew and grew and grew. And I don't know if I'm getting ahead of you, but then we made some pretty cool national lists. And then the doors basically got blown the F open. How did you get the food critics who would do that in the door? I, we were really lucky. There's a restaurant on Upshur Street called Hamitsu that was on some of these, like on the radar of some of these places. So a food editor from Bon Appetit was going to Hamitsu and was just waiting for her table and came across and tried a pizza. And so I remember she Instagrammed it and one of my friends texted me, oh my God, Julia Kramer Instagrammed me. And I was like, who the F is Julia Kramer? Like we were just clueless. We were just working hard and trying to create a great experience. And then we were like, oh my God, that's super cool. And then we honestly didn't think about it again. And we just went back to work. And then I was up in like George with my family and my phone exploded. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And that was the day the top 50 Bon Appetit list came out. And we didn't even know that was a list, right? Like that's how clueless we were. So there was no, I mean, we're, we're really blessed that they, she found us and came and tried it, but there was no sort of corporate strategy. And I do think in the food and beverage industry, if you just like do something really, really well and do it really well every day and give great service and create like a super welcoming environment, I do think you will be rewarded eventually. I just think there's enough people looking for cool restaurants that are sort of, you know, food bloggers and creating lists that if you do something really well, you'll eventually get put on the radar. And I think it's the best way to do it. It's like that organic, authentic way, right? Where these restaurants who are saying, we're the best and puffing our chest out. And this is the type of experience you're supposed to have. It doesn't feel authentic. It doesn't resonate with people. And I think in 2019, when people are being blasted with so much information all the time, I think like finding a way to feel authentic and feel original is like really, really important. So did your like phone explosion with all of the Mm -hmm. people who were saying, oh my God, you guys made this list, translate into more customers? Yeah, we basically overnight sales went up 40%, now sustained for two and a half years. Like literally that day we had a line out the door to the corner and I, Danny and I looked at each other and we were like, what the F are we going to do? Like, this is mad. Like, we could barely keep up with what we were doing before that. And we were just like, oh shit. So what did you do? We had some really bad nights where people were waiting for pizza for 50 minutes or an hour and we just had to figure out how to get more efficient and, you know, nights that the kitchen was bogged down. We were like, front of house, this is your time to shine. It's time to give amazing service and make sure people are leaving happy. And that's why I talk about food is not enough, right? It has to be vibes and service and all that stuff. So we had to hit it from every angle of the restaurant and had to hit it relentlessly. But it was like, it was a slow slog to sort of get our heads back above water. Probably took like almost a year to a point where we were like, okay, we have a grasp on this again. Thanks for tuning in to this K-Cup mini episode of Time for Coffee. If you want to listen to our entire caffeinated career conversation, please check out the show notes for this episode. Thanks so much for listening to Time for Coffee, where the professionals in the jobs that most interest you always have time to grab coffee 24-7, no matter where you live. 
I have one quick favor to ask you. Remember to rate, review, and subscribe to Time for Coffee. Thanks so much.